So this lecture is part of an online algebraic geometry course on schemes and will be about divisors on Dedekind domains, or at least their spectra. Um, so we recall that in previous lectures, we've defined a map from Cartier divisors or Cartier divisor classes to V divisors or V divisor classes. And we've also defined a map from Cartier divisors to the Picard group, which is usually an isomorphism. Um, so this map here is called the Chern class. And um, I guess actually before going on a bit, I better explain why this is called the Chern class. Um, so um, suppose X is a complex manifold. Um, might be, say, a Riemann surface. Then on this complex manifold, we have the following exact sequence of sheaves. 2 pi i z goes to O, um, goes to O star, goes to, I'm not quite sure whether to put a zero or a one here. It depends whether you write this additively or not. Here, this is the sheaf of meromorphic functions. This is the sheaf of non-zero meromorphic functions. That's ones that are not zero anywhere. And this here is the exponential map. And the kernel of the exponential map is just multiple integer multiples of two pi i. Um, and from this exact sequence of sheaves, we can get an exact sequence of cohomology groups. And yeah, I know I haven't defined cohomology groups yet, but this is just a this is just for background information. Um, in particular, we get a map from H1 of O star to H2 of 2 pi i z for, as part of the long cohomology exact sequence. And when we, we were discussing line bundles, I said the line bundles sort of correspond to the first check cohomology group. And this is more or less the first check cohomology group. So it's more or less the Picard group. So we get a natural boundary map from um, line bundles to the second cohomology group of a manifold. And this is, this is the map that is the Chern class in differential geometry. Um, more generally, you can define Chern classes not just for line bundles, but for arbitrary vector bundles. And they take values in the even dimensional cohomology classes. But we're just going to be looking at the simplest case of line bundles. Um, now, um, what we would like to do is do an analog of this in algebraic geometry. And we run into a serious problem with this because we've got this, this exponential map is not algebraic. And we've got another problem in that, well, you can define the sheaf Z in algebraic geometry over a scheme. However, it's co that the cohomology um, of the sheet of the sheaf Z turns out to be rather badly behaved and it doesn't give you the cohomology classes you expect. Um, it's a really rather difficult problem to find the correct analog of integral cohomology. This was solved by Grothendieck using et al cohomology, but we're not going to go into that, um, at least not yet. Um, so what do we do? Well, a second cohomology group is sort of dual to a second homology group, I guess this should be the homology of x with coefficients in z, and by Poincaré duality, a second cohomology group is sort of dual to um, a cohomology group of, uh, so a homology group of dimension n minus 2, and homology of dimension n minus 2 is something to do with co-dimension 2 subsets. Well, if you're working over the complex numbers, then that, that, then something of real co-dimension two is of something complex co-dimension one. So that's something to do with divisors. That's V divisors rather than Cartier divisors. So in other words, V divisors are something to do with the second cohomology group. They're, they're sort of analogous to it. And we saw that Cartier um, divisor classes, at least in nice cases, correspond exactly to the Picard group. So this group here is sort of analogous to the Cartier divisors. And this group here 
is sort of vaguely analogous to VE divisors. So, and the map from the Cartier divisors to VE divisors that we define turns out to be the analog of the Chern class map in differential geometry. Um, so, um, um, more generally, um, in high dimensions, the Picard group would be replaced by some sort of K theory, where K theory describes vector bundles over a manifold, and the VE group would, would be represented by some high dimensional generalization of cohomology, either using intersection theory or et al. cohomology. So that's why, that's why the map from Cartier divisors to VE divisors is sometimes called a churn class. Well, now we get back to Dedekind domains. So if we've got a Dedekind domain R, we're going to look at the scheme spectrum of R and try and figure out what the Ve divisors and the Cartier divisors look like on that. So, so let's just recall what a Dedekind domain is. Um, so a Dedekind domain um, has the following properties. First of all, it's an integral domain. Um, secondly, it's um, notarian. And thirdly, every prime that's not zero is maximal. And fourthly, it's integrally closed in the quotient field. So, um, so th 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 this is the um, definition in terms of algebra. Now let's translate this to geometry. So uh, geometry, well, if you've got an integral domain, this just means you've got an affine scheme, which is integral. Notarian translates to notarian. Um, every prime being maximal, every non-zero prime being maximal, just says the dimension or the Kroll dimension is at most one. And integrally closed in the quotient field means that the scheme is normal. Um, now for one dimensional schemes, that, that's more or less equivalent to saying it's regular. There's no singular points. So um, Dedekind domains correspond to one dimensional th affine things with no singular point. So there's an obvious example of this. Um, first of all, any non-singular affine curve over a field. So for example, we could take the curve y squared equals x cubed minus x, and the coordinate ring of this would be a Dedekind domain. The other really important example are um, integers of algebraic number fields. So a typical example of this would be the ring of Gaussian integers, Z of I. Um, and back in the 19th century, when people were studying curves and um, integers of algebraic number fields, people noticed that there was a strong analogy between them. And um, these days we say this is because they're both basically one-dimensional affine schemes. Um, so uh, now th th there are two classical approaches to the ideal class group. So um, in algebraic number theory, there's something called the ideal class group, which measures how far the um, ring of integers is from being a unique factorization domain. And there are traditionally two opposing ways to define this. And people used to sort of argue a bit about which the best way was. So the first method is using divisors. So what's a divisor? Well, um, here we take the free abelian group on the maximal ideals of um, our Dedekind domain. Um, so for instance, 
for z of i, if you took z of i, the maximal ideals would be 1 plus i, 3, 2 plus i, 2 minus i, and so on. So you take the free abelian group generated by these elements and call that the ring of divisors. Principal divisor, well, if f is an element of r, then you can write the ideal f as a product of prime ideals because it's a Dedekind domain, so it'd be p1 to the n1, p2 to the n2, and so on. And n1, p1 plus n2, p2, and so on, is called a principal divisor. And then you can define the divisor class group to be the group of divisors modulo the principal divisors. Um, and this is trivial if and only if the Dedekind domain is a unique factorization domain. Um, and what you can do is you can think of the elements of the Dedekind domain as sort of being like functions. For instance, if we take R equals Z, so the divisors are two, three, five, and so on. Then you think of say a number 12 over five would have a zero of order two at two, and of order one at three, and a pole of order one at five. Um, this is in the same way that if you take, say, x squared times x minus one over x minus two, this is a zero of order two at the ideal x, and a zero of order one at the ideal x minus one, and, and a pole of order one at the ideal x minus two. So um, this is part of the analogy between, between algebraic number fields and, and curves. So, um, anyway, if you notice, the, the divisors that we've defined for a Dedekind domain are exactly the V divisors of a scheme. So divisors in algebraic number theory are the same as what geometers would call V divisors. And the divisor class group is just the V divisors modulo principal V divisors. So it's just the, um, the, 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 the group CL of um, V divisor classes. So this group was sort of discovered more or less independently by people doing number theory and people doing geometry. Well, I guess it wasn't really independent since the people doing it knew perfectly well about the analog. Um, okay, so that's one way of defining um, the, 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 the ideal class group. Um, I, I guess I better just do a quick example where the divisor class group isn't trivial. So the simplest case is z root minus five that we've had a few times before. And here we can see that, for instance, the principal divisor two factorizes as two one plus root minus five squared, and three factorizes as um, three one plus root minus five, three one minus root minus five. And um, one plus root minus five factorizes as two one plus root minus five, three one plus root minus five, and so on. So, so these are principal, and um, however, the, the, the ideals two one plus root minus five, three one plus or minus root minus five, are not principal. So the divisor class group is definitely non-trivial because these are non-trivial elements in it that aren't principal. Um, on the other hand, there was a second approach to the, to the um, ideal class group, which uses ideals rather than rather than divisors. So here we 
recall that a fractional ideal is a non-zero finitely generated submodule of K, which is the quotient field of quotients of the Dedekind domain. Um, and the for a Dedekind domain, the fractional ideals actually form a group under multiplication of well, multiplication of ideals extended to fractional ideals in the obvious way. And you can quotient out this by the group of principal fractional ideals, which are just all multiples of, of some particular element of the quotient field. Um, and this is called the ideal class group. Um, so, um, so for example, for Z root minus five, um, there are two elements of the ideal class group. You can either have the ideal one or the ideal two, one plus root minus five. And this is a non-principal ideal, and it's fairly straightforward to calculate that, that any fractional ideal is equal to a principal ideal times one of these two. So here the um, ideal class group is order two. And we notice that fractional ideals are essentially the same as invertible subsheaves of the field K. Uh, or, or rather of the sheaf corresponding to the field K. And these are essentially the same as Cartier divisors. Um, so the two classical approaches to um, the class group of a number field, the divisor class group or the ideal class group, turn out to be these two, the, the correspond to the two different ways we've had of defining divisors, either Cartier divisors or Ve divisors. And the classical equivalence between um, the ideal class group and the divisor class group in number theory turns out to be just the isomorphism we've given between the Cartier divisors and the Ve divisors. I guess you could, if you want, quotient these out by principal divisors. So um, arguing about which of these is the correct approach is a bit silly. They're two perfectly good approaches, which just happen to be the same for um, Dedekind rings. So I think it probably helps a bit to see what's going on. If I give you an example where these two groups are not the same. So here I'm going to look at the spectrum of Z root minus three. So Z root minus three is the classic ex example of an order in an algebraic number field that is not a Dedekind domain. And the reason it's not a Dedekind domain is it's not integrally closed. Um, because um, um, the element root minus three plus one over two is a root of x squared plus x plus one equals zero. So it's integral, but it's not in here. So, so we actually have z root minus three is contained in z one plus root minus three over two. And this one is a Dedekind domain. And so in particular, we get maps from the spectrum of z root minus three um, and um, the spectrum of z one plus root minus three over two. And this um, scheme is non-singular, whereas this one has a sort of singularity. 
in it. If you want to sort of visualize a picture of them, you can think of the spectrum of this as being kind of like a curve with a node, and this is kind of like a curve without a node that maps onto it or something like that. But of course, these aren't really algebraic curves. This is just a sort of picture of what's going on. Um, anyway, um, this scheme has a singularity. Um, um, at the point two. So this is a prime ideal of it, and it's actually got a got a singularity there. Um, so let's look at the Cartier divisors and the Ve divisors. First of all, the Ve divisor class group is non-trivial. Um, in particular, there's the prime ideal to one plus root minus three, which is not principal. Uh, sorry, I just realized I made an error here. This isn't the point two, it's the ideal two one plus root minus three, of course. Um, so this prime ideal is not principal. So the Ve divisor class group is, is, is not one. Now let's look at the Cartier divisors. So um, here we have to look at the fractional ideals and it's not difficult to work up what they are. There are two sorts of fractional ideal. There's a principal one and there's the ideal two plus root minus three. Two one plus root minus three, and this is um, well. Um, so it looks as if the group of Cartier divisors is isomorphic to the group of Ve divisors. Here we've got um, two candidates for Cartier divisors. However, um, we actually made an error because this one is not a Cartier divisor. or at least there's no Cartier divisor corresponding to this. The, the, the point is, this is, this is a fractional ideal but is not invertible. So in a Dedekind domain, all non-zero fractional ideals are automatically invertible, but this actually fails here. Um, in fact, we can work out what its square is. If we take two one plus root minus minus three and square it, we get the ideal four, two plus two root minus three, minus two plus two root minus three, which is two times two, one plus root minus three, which is the ideal we started with times two. So if, if this ideal were invertible, it would be um, the same as the ideal two, which it isn't. Um, so, uh, in fact, the Cartier divisor group only has one element. Which is just generated by the, by the, um, by the principal ideal. Um, in fact, we can um, see other things going wrong. If we look at the local ring, um, where if we kind of localize at two and add root minus three, then um, the maximal ideal is now um, two, um, one plus root minus three. And we see M over M squared is two dimensional over um, the field, the quotient field, um, um, which has two elements. So M is not principal um, in the local ring. Um, so in particular, it's, it's not um, locally free at this point. And it doesn't give us an invertible sheaf or an element of the Picard group or anything else. 
Um, so in other words, there's a whole cascade of, of things that go wrong um, with this um, example. So here are things that go wrong. So first of all, um, um, so uh, it, 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 in spec of z root minus three, we have a local ring is not regular or normal. Um, secondly, the ideal two one plus root minus three is not principal in this local ring. So it's not invertible. So for a Dedekind domain, all local rings are discrete valuation rings. So every ideal becomes principal in the local ring. So, so this fails for this example. Um, and thirdly, the map from the Picard group to the Vey group, or um, this would be corres corresponds to fractional ideals. I should say invertible fractional ideals. Um, this corresponds to divisors, is not an isomorphism. Um, Okay, so that's enough about Dedekind domains. The next lecture will be um, more examples of uh, Cartier and Vey divisor class groups.